Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Glad to have you here. We're going to start with a children's song so the children can come right on forward. And know uh, the Sunday school children will, will help to start our service with their, with their music for us today. Thank you, children. That was wonderful. Yeah, so beautiful to hear your voices and to do it a cappella. I don't know if I could do that. I don't think so. But unfortunately, you are going to hear me sing today. We, we are starting our, our new hymnal. Um, so you have blue hymnals in, in the pews before you today. It's printed for you in your worship folders as well. You can follow along on the screen. But the, the liturgy is going to be a little bit different, so pay special attention to it. Um, we're going to be using the service setting three for the next several weeks so we can get used to it. Some of us have been practicing it, so if you don't catch on right away, that's okay. Um, we'll do it for the next like two months or so so we can uh, learn it a little bit better. Um, just to be aware of that as we go through our service today. Otherwise, our service wraps up our series that we've been going through about um, being uncovered. Um, God has truths in his word that we can only discover if he uncovers them for us. Today we find this final truth with a little bit of a twist, that when his glory is hidden, when his glory is covered, there it is actually on display. And we'll talk more about that in our sermon today as we, as we go through our service. But for now, let's continue with our opening hymn, O Jesus, King Most Wonderful.
humbly stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and I have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. And in the voice that came from the bright cloud, you foreshadowed our adoption as your sons. In your mercy, make us co-heirs of glory with Jesus our King, and bring us at last to heaven through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from Exodus chapter 34. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not realize that the skin of his face was shining because he had been speaking with the Lord. When Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, they were amazed that the skin of his face was shining, so they were afraid to come close to him. Moses called to them, so Aaron and all the rulers of the community returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came close to him, and he gave them all of the commands that the Lord had spoken to him on Mount Sinai. When Moses was finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out again. Then he would come out and tell the people of Israel what he had been commanded. Whenever the people of Israel saw Moses' face, they would see that the skin of Moses' face was shining. Then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with the Lord again. The word of the Lord. We continue with our psalm of the day, Psalm 2.
Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3. If the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look directly at the face of Moses because of the glory of his faith, of his face, though it was fading, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be much more glorious? For if the ministry that brought condemnation has glory, the ministry that brought righteousness has even more glory. In fact, in this case, what was glorious is no longer very glorious because of the greater glory of that which surpasses it. Indeed, if what is fading away was glorious, how much more glorious is that which is permanent? Therefore, since we have this kind of hope, we act with great boldness. We are not like Moses. We put a veil over his face so that the Israelites could not continue to look at the end of the radiance as it was fading away. In spite of this, their minds were hardened. Yes, up to the present day, the same veil remains when the Old Testament is read. It has not been removed because it is taken away only in Christ. Instead, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their heart. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But all of us who reflect the Lord's glory with an unveiled face and being transformed into his own image from one degree of glory to another. This too is from the Lord, who is a spirit. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Gospel according to Luke chapter 9. This lesson will serve as a basis for our sermon. About eight days after he said these words, Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothing became dazzling white. Just then, two men, Moses and Elijah, were talking with him. They appeared in glory and were talking about his departure which he was going to bring to fulfillment in Jerusalem. Peter and those with him were weighed down with sleep, but when they were completely awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let's make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not realize what he was saying. While he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them. They were afraid as they went into the cloud. Then a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, they found Jesus alone. They kept this secret and told no one in those days any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. We continue with the hymn of the day in 388.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. All right, so fair warning for you. There's going to be a spoiler alert. Is everybody familiar with what a spoiler alert is? It's, it's when someone, me in this case, ruins the, the play or the movie by telling you what happened. Like, if you've never seen Star Wars Episode Five before, and the big reveal is that Darth Vader is Luke's father. If you didn't know that, that would have been a big spoiler alert. But I took the liberation of thinking that since this film is about 40 years old now, you have all seen Star Wars, and you all know that Darth Vader is Luke's father. Well, today we kind of have a, a, a plot twist in mind for us. As we conclude our lesson of, uh, from this epiphany season, we see that God goes from glory to glory, but this glory that we have here is, is not the glory that we're going to talk about up on the mountain. It's the glory that is yet to come. You see, all through epiphany, what we've been doing is uncovering these truths that only God could discover for us. We couldn't come to think of them on our own. Only through his word did he reveal these things to us. Afterwards, that, after all, that is what the word epiphany means, a, an unveiling or an uncovering, a, a revealing of certain things. But today we kind of twist that around. And we see that when Jesus' glory is most hidden, when it's covered, then it is on display. So we have a, a kind of a, a plot twist of sorts. The, the big reveal is that Jesus in his glory is totally different than what we would expect. Is your mind kind of blown? Are you kind of confused? Are you a little bit still stuck on the whole Star Wars reference? Well, let me try to explain what's going on in this lesson from Luke. The truth that God uncovers for us today is that when, when his glory, when Jesus' glory is hidden, then it is on display. Hopefully you recall what happened in our lesson from Luke about what Jesus going up to the mountain in transfiguration. But maybe what you don't realize is what happened just eight days before that. Because that's how our lesson started. It said eight days later. But eight days before that, something very significant took place. This is when Jesus said to his disciples, Who do the crowds say I am? And they had all sorts of answers didn't they? Some said John the Baptist. Some wanted to say Elijah. Some wanted to say another prophet from Israel's history. But then Jesus flips it around on them and he says, but who do you say I am? And that's where Peter gives us the great confession. He says, the Christ of God. You are the living one. You are the Christ of God. There is none other. You are him in the flesh. But then Jesus goes on and tells them what it means to be the Christ. And he tells them about his passion, that is, that is his upcoming brutal betrayal, his innocent suffering, and his imminent death. And Peter, the one who had just made this wonderful confession before, rebukes Jesus, says, Jesus, no, you don't want to do those things. And so in turn, Jesus rebukes Peter and even calls him Satan because Peter had in mind the things of men and not the things of God. And then Jesus tells us exactly what it means to follow him. He says, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And then we get to our lesson where it's eight days later from this then Jesus goes up into the mountain. He's transfigured. His clothes are dazzling white. Moses and Elijah appear. They have this conversation. What are they talking about? Well, they're talking about Jesus' departure that will take place in Jerusalem that he'll fulfill there. And then Peter says something out of uh, maybe uh, not realizing what he's saying. And he says, it's good for us to be here. He wants to put up those three tents for each of them. Then they go into this cloud and they hear the voice of God again, which is reminiscent of when it first took place. 
back a couple weeks ago at Jesus' baptism, where those words are almost exactly the same, but this time Jesus says, or God the Father says, this is my son whom I love, listen to him. And so we have a, a little bit extra here that God gave us this time. Then they go down the mountain, and they don't speak about their sins until later. That's the lesson, and that's the context. But what does it all mean? Well, first of all, with this lesson, we begin where we, we end where we began. We started with glory. Remember how it all started in Epiphany? You had the Magi coming to worship the baby, and then Jesus with the, the, the baptism from John. And there the heavens opened, and God the Father declared those wonderful words, This is my Son. There was glory, and here is glory. So it begins with glory, it ends with glory. That's what this epiphany season is revealing to us. That God is full of glory, that God is full of power and truth. But what about that twist? That when his glory is most hidden, it's most on display, how does that come out in this lesson? It's there, but you have to get to the details. You have to look behind the scenes of what's going on to really understand how Jesus' hidden glory is really being revealed here. When they're up on that mountain, Peter says that it's good for us to be here. That's an important detail for us to, to look at, that Peter wanted this to be permanent. He wanted it to stay just like this. Because think about what happened eight days earlier with that confession and then that rebuke. Peter wanted that glory for Jesus. He didn't want him to go to the cross. He didn't want him to give up all of this wonderful power that he had. Instead, he wanted to keep it. And so it looked like Jesus is finally taking some advice from Peter. So Peter says, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Here we go. Let's have some more of this, Jesus. But while Peter wants all of the glory, Jesus wants none of the glory. At least not in the sense that we think about it. If Jesus were in it for all the glory, the Bible would be a totally different book that we read. If Jesus were in it for the glory, we'd have a full of himself Jesus whenever he performed a miracle. If Jesus were in it for the glory after he did these miracles and, and the onlookers saw him perform one of them, he would say, make sure to go and tell your friends about me. But instead, we see the opposite. Often he says, don't go and tell anyone about this because they're not ready yet. If Jesus were in it for all the glory, we wouldn't see the compassionate, kind, loving Jesus that we have all known to grow and love. And if he were in it for the glory, he wouldn't have been able to set it all aside so that he could do what that departure is all about. You see, that's another detail that we must look at as well. They had this wonderful conversation, Jesus, Elijah, and Moses. And man, do we wish that we could have been there to hear what they are talking about, to know exactly what that conversation was, but we simply aren't told the length of the conversation. Or, or everything that it's about, but we are told one simple detail. They appeared in glory and were talking about his departure, which he was going to bring to fulfillment in Jerusalem. Think about that. In the Bible, how often do we see Jesus in all of his glory? We see glimpses here and there. We see him perform miracles. We see him um, do things that only he could do as God. And here is maybe one of the most prominent glimpses of Jesus' glory when he's up on that mountain. Yet, the conversation that he has with Moses and Elijah is nothing about glory. At least not in the way that we think about it. Instead, it's about what's coming next. And that's what this lesson from Transfiguration is really trying to get us to look at. There's a reason why we always end the Epiphany season with Transfiguration. We see Jesus go from glory to glory. We see him be revealed as the, the Son of God who is in the world for all the world. All of this good stuff in Epiphany. But right now we're on the cusp of something even greater. 
what Jesus is about to do. This wonderful departure from this world that will take place in Jerusalem. In other words, we're leading right into Lent with this lesson. We're going to see what true glory looks like. His glory that is hidden in Christ is true glory. It's not a radiant face. It's not blinding light clothes or anything like that. It's, it's not what Peter wanted. It's, it's what Jesus is about to do. That's what true glory is. And if we think about that, we understand that Jesus' glory had to be hidden. It had to be covered up in order for it to be revealed. Think about that lesson from Moses when he would come down to the mountain after talking with God and his skin um, was dazzling and it shone brightly. The people, they were afraid. They were scared just of that reflection of glory from God to Moses then to the people. Think if God were before us in all of his glory. Well, we would be trembling on our knees begging for forgiveness because we would understand something very crucial, that he is worthy and he is holy and we are not, at least not by our own merit. And so God's glory needed to be hidden in Jesus as he goes forth from here. And that's exactly what he does. And that's another detail that we must look at from our lesson. When God the Father speaks of God the Son, he says at the very end to listen to him. This listen to him was for Peter, but it was for us too. Because often we are like Peter. In one moment we might be making the great confession that Jesus is the Lord, but in the next moment we might be in league with Satan by our sinful thoughts, words, and actions. In one moment we might have this... Um, this wonderful mountaintop experience of, of God coming in our lives and we want it to stay right here on earth and we want this world to be better. But we must realize that this world is not heaven. Or often, like Peter, we don't simply know what we're saying. We're just kind of babbling, thinking things that we shouldn't be thinking, saying things that we shouldn't be saying. In other words, what I am saying is that God is telling us to listen to Jesus. Listen to him and see what he's about to do next. Because we so often don't listen to Jesus. Instead, we want to interject our own thoughts or feelings here or there. We so often want the glory and nothing else. But Jesus is about to show us what true glory is. It's not a radiant face and clothing as blinding of the sun. Instead, it's Jesus and what he's about to do on another mountain. Because you see from here, from this Mount of Transfiguration, he's marching resolutely, setting his face towards another mountain in Jerusalem, where he is going to go and be the Savior of the whole world, where he's going to do something that looks completely inglorious, that doesn't look like it's filled with glory at all. He's going to trade his perfect life the Son of God, the one who's immortal, the one who cannot die, is going to trade his life and die for us on the cross. Yes. Go on the cross, even unto death there. That is true glory. In theological terms, we talk about this as, as Jesus' humiliation. That's where he sets aside the full use of his power, sets aside a little bit of his glory, and, and we have these different steps that he takes of his humiliation where he humbles himself. That's what humiliation means in this text, that, he is, that, that one humbles himself. That's what Jesus does. The God of all eternity saw to it that it was in our best interest that he would take on flesh and blood and live a life that was worthy of God the Father only so that he could trade it all and die for us. That was his mission. That was his purpose. To trade his perfect life for our imperfect life. To go to the cross. And that's what this conversation was about between him, Elijah, and Moses. And they were all in agreement about what Jesus was going to do next. As he sets his face resolutely towards another mountain. And he goes there 
to pay for the world's sin. Now, none of that may look glorious. None of that might be what we think glory is. We, we think of glory, we think of, of power and might and being able to do and, and affect all these other things in different ways with our, our power. But Jesus sets that aside. And it's the most glorious thing that we can ever see. You see, God's glory needed to be hidden in Christ. He hid it by taking something that seems completely inglorious, namely death, even death on a cross, and making it filled with glory. It's a hidden glory. But the more that it is hidden, the more it is on display. The more that Jesus gives up for us, the more glorious this act of saving the whole world from their sins is. Because that's exactly what Jesus accomplished. By his wounds we are healed. By his death we have life. It is a hidden glory that is now hidden in the gospel. And this is how God reveals that glory to us through the wonderful word of God in the gospel, in the word and sacrament. So that we don't run away from it and, and fear from it, but so that we can rather stare at it and wonder about it as long as we want. That's why God has hidden his glory from us. You can think of it kind of like the season of fall or autumn. When fall comes around and the leaves start to change, that is when they're the most beautiful. With the red and the, and the orange and the yellow and all these, these wonderful, like I, I picture a, a maple tree with all the different colors that it has. There it's the most beautiful. Well, right before Jesus dies is where he's the most beautiful. He doesn't look like it. He's beaten and bloodied and bruised. He's, he's hanging on an object of shame. There he is dying, suffocating for us. It, it doesn't look glorious. It doesn't look beautiful. But boy, is it the most beautiful thing that we have ever seen. That Jesus would go and suffer such travesty. The, the sin of the whole world, your sins and mine on Jesus' shoulders, that he would suffer for us to give us eternal life. Yeah, there is nothing more beautiful than that. Nothing even close to comparison of how beautiful it is that Jesus would go from this mountain to another only to die for us. Because on the cross of Calvary is where Jesus paid for our sins. Not just our sins, but the sins of the whole world. And I don't know anything more beautiful than having a Savior who is willing to do that in our place. So as we wrap up this epiphany season, remember what true glory looks like. It's not the, the glamour. It's not the, the bright, shiny face. No, it's Jesus on the cross. It's a hidden glory. And so as we wrap up epiphany and head into Lent, know that when Jesus' glory is most hidden, namely in his suffering and death, well, then it is most on this Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our faith. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will continue with the prayer of the church. First of all, we have a special intercession for our Christian brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We also want to um, say a prayer for Darlene Hawkins' daughter, Kyleen who has been kept safe during the fire that took place at her apartment. Um, it's 
So we, we thank God for that and want to keep her in our prayers too. We pray. Loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe on which we live. You control all things through your Son, who sits at your right hand in glory. Give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubt. Send your spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. The signs of the times warn us that the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Dear Lord, we also ask that you especially be with our brothers and sisters in Ukraine who are undergoing such travesty right now. We pray that you would be with them, give them aid, comfort, and relief, and let them know that they have a loving Savior who has already done everything for them for their eternity. So give them hope and peace in this difficult situation. We also ask that you instill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. Hold in your care, Lord, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain and all who have been afflicted by disease or facing death. We pray at this time also for Kyleen, who is experiencing the, the loss of um, a home where she lives due to the fire at the apartment. We pray that you would give her friends and family to give her some relief at this time. Pray that we could help out in some way to... Um, get back some of her belongings, or at the very least, help us to be a friend in Christ who can tell her about her wonderful Savior. We ask, dear Lord, that you would pour out your compassion on the grieving and comfort the mourners who miss someone they love. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send us. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. At this time, we'll collect the offering and we'll also have uh, the choir and
We continue by singing the hymn, How Good, Lord, to Be Here, found on page 16. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our next hymn. Usually at this time, this is the end of our service, but since we are ending the Epiphany season, we say farewell to something that we have been singing very predominantly recently, the word Alleluia. Now, as we go through this next paragraph in two, I want you to remember, um, it doesn't mean we're stopping it forever, right? There's an end, and then we get to sing Alleluia again, and that's on Easter morning. So, let's continue. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we next gather for worship, it'll be Ash Wednesday. That's this Wednesday, the first day of Lent. On that day, we will begin our solemn journey to the Savior's cross. While the joy of faith remains undiminished throughout the year, our rejoicing during Lent is muted and quiet. For centuries, therefore, Christian churches have omitted their most jubilant songs during this season, including the word Alleluia, which means praise the Lord. Now for a time, we say farewell to Alleluia. We do this to prepare ourselves for the quieter days of Lent. Hallelujah, as we'll return on Easter dawn as we gather to shout our praise to the risen Lord. And we sing together, Alleluia, Song of Triumph. Thank you. 
Good morning once again. I can taste the winter months just ending now. It's so close. So close. All right, we have a few announcements, but first a special thanks to Tammy uh, for playing today, for Brian and Josh doing the online streaming, for our ushers, and of course we had two choirs sing today. We had the Shepherd Kids sing today, and we also had our choir, the adult choir, sing upstairs. So thank you very much for that. Um, all right. So we have a few announcements coming up this week. This week is Ash Wednesday. We start our midweek uh, Wednesday Lenten services. Included with that are some meals to help the people who are preparing those meals. We ask that you sign up uh, to see, oh, just to know how much food to bring for each one of those meals. You know how hard it is to plan for that. Um, there's a sign up in the back if you wouldn't mind, including maybe how many people you think are coming. Even if it's a rough estimate, that would be very helpful, especially for this Wednesday, if you can get your name on there, that would be great. Um, we have been, let's see, opening open gym is tomorrow night. Everyone is welcome. We even have some 14 and 12 year olds playing with us now, and we went full court for the first time because we had eight. So if you know somebody who wants to play or if you'd like to play yourself and get some exercise, please come join us tomorrow, 6.30. Uh, elders meeting Tuesday night at 6.00. There is the times for our Ash Wednesday stuff. 6 p.m. is the meal, 7 p.m. is the service. Um, this week's fun is a fun night for Bible study in North Liberty. Um, we usually do it the first week of each month. And this week, we're even including the campus ministry students for pizza and bowling. So if you'd like to come down and join us, uh, that's going to be at Colonial Lanes in Iowa City. Um, we, we went there, uh, I think it was last month. Did we do last month mini golf there? Or was that two months ago? I think it was last month. Yeah, that was last month. Um, so if you'd like to join us and meet and greet our campus ministry students, um, I have invited them all. Kind of hard to get a response from them, but we will see how many we can get for our first time. Uh, Shepherd Kids is today during our adult Bible study. We're starting a new adult Bible study today. Probably one of your favorite books. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite books. It's a very short book, Jonah. There's four chapters in Jonah, so we have four lessons. And let's, let's see uh, what things you may not have known about Jonah uh, in these lessons. That's, that's the goal. Um, otherwise, there's our evening Lenten service meals all laid out for you. Uh, the last big announcement I have, oh, I forgot one, sorry, live stream help. We have two guys going back and forth right now. We would love to have one more person just to help out. Uh, helps them if both are gone for one week, then we don't have anybody helping out with the live stream. But if you can click a button with one finger, you're, you're, you're qualified, okay? So you let me know or let Pastor know, and we can get you up there even one Sunday a month. That would help out tremendously. So, all right, now the, now the bigger announcement. Um, not that none of those were big. This one is a sign-up bill for Easter Fest and Grand Opening. Um, we have a list of different positions that we are in need of for our, especially Easter Fest day when we have all the kids come. Um, it's going to be in Centennial Park instead of Penn Meadows Park. They had a full baseball tournament there planned already, so we thought we'd go to the other side of town and we're over there. But there's greeters at a registration table needed. We have a bunch of crafts we are planning on doing, just to help with the crafts. Gloria is making a bunch of cookies, so we get to help decorate cookies with the kids. And then there's, of course, activities. Um, activities of the Easter egg hunt itself. We have a bouncy slide going to be there and a couple other activities. Um, the last thing that would be like volunteer work 
is the next page next to it, set up and take down. But I didn't really put a lot on there. But if you'd like to know more information about that, let me know. Um, I'm trying to put together to see how many people uh, can help out with this. Um, remember, this is Wednesday, not Wednesday, Saturday, April 16th from 11 until 2. I'm going to keep repeating it every time I see you guys until we get there because that's all I'm looking forward to right now. I got a lot of planning we've been doing. Um, any other announcements I'm forgetting? That was a lot of announcements. All right, let's, uh, we can join you all downstairs uh, as we eat some of Gloria's amazing food and coffee and then join in Bible study. So may God bless your day and your week.